well it's March mid-March and when I get to March that March April May time there's one fish that springs to mind to get get out or see if I can get out to target and that's place good time of year as many of you know to target the place so I'm going to fish the whole of the tide we're on the ebb tide at the moment bit of the ebb down to high water and then fish fish the whole of the the ebb tide drifting around over the clean ground to see if I can pick up pick 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 one up now I was here at crack of dawn very early and I decided before I started the place fishing to shoot out to a reef just to mix it up to see if there was any pollock on it or maybe possibility of a codling but it was pretty dead to be honest I spent about three quarters of an hour on the reef fishing with lures drifting over and all I, I managed, managed to pick up something I managed to pick up a wrasse but no sign of pollock or anything else so got the drift going for the place fishing I've got two rods out one each side of the kayak and what I do today I've done plenty of videos in the past about place fishing where I go into detail but what I thought I'd do today is get on with the fishing let's see if we can catch one first hopefully I can at least one when I catch one or if I catch one what I do then is I'll look at the baits that I'm using and the setup but basically just cleaning uh, drifting over some clean ground got some nice conditions today there was a bit of a swell early on and I'll be honest with you it gets to it gets it happens to it doesn't matter how many times you come out there's that odd occasion when you think oh I don't feel too good today and I didn't I was out on that reef uh, when there was a bit more of a it was a bit rolling and I started feeling a bit queasy but I've just popped a couple of seed sickness tablets tablets which I keep in my dry box here they're permanently in the dry box for these odd occasions happened once or twice with me in the past you just feel it you just feel you just feel you're not quite right today and you could turn it you could turn it could turn bad you could seasick and once once you've gone of course you're gone but uh, fingers crossed I've caught it just in time and the and the seasick tablets will, will work but anyway this is one of my favorite forms of fishing just chilled out it's so relaxing just sit back here drift along and wait for that rod tip to to go I've got some sabikis with me as well um, just in case I see any mackerel but to be honest on the fish finder it's, it's completely dead I'm not really this time of year at this particular location I'm not really expecting uh, any luck with the mackerel but but you never know but fingers crossed we'll pick up at least one flatty got a first bite on the left rod there I'll li leave it a bit give it give it plenty of time to uh, hopefully you'll see it can you see that just rattle in there yep there we go all right so hopefully it's on yep It's on now. Success. Well, that was a great start to get a place on the very first drift. Really pleasing because it might be the only fish I get. I get all day, day long, but at least I've caught the target species. Okay, now I've got caught a fish. I'll talk about the setup now I'm mainly going to focus on the business end the rig but basically got a couple of boat rods 12 to 20 pounds 7 foot 6 long two multipliers loaded with braid with a with a, a leader at the end and then th the important bit very simple rig just a running ledger so I've got a boom there to hold the lead running free and the lead is two ounces two ounces is all, is all I need at this particular mark to keep that bait on the bottom dragging along the bottom I'm using a two ounce watch lead 
which is designed, got the bumps on. So the idea is that, that with those bumps, it drags along the sand, flat along the sand like that, and those little bumps help to kick up the sand a little bit. A bit of resistance, kicking up the sand, which could be an attraction to the fish. They see, a, see that sand being puffed up, might think it's a, a, a sandal or something coming out the sand, or a crab. So a two ounce watch lead. And then the, the trace down the end, swivel at the top, and I've got about four foot of 20 pound fluorocarbon. Now, the most important bit down the end. Thread onto the, onto the trace, I've got a little sliding stop. Then some attractor beads. I've got a half a dozen. Usually I, I normally go between six, six to ten, ten beads. Half a dozen black and green. Personally, from, past, from trial and error, I've always found black and green seems to work best for me. So some black or green attractor ble beads. As well, for those of you that don't know, that have never fished place before, for place before, uh, they're attracted to bling. You can use spoons, beads, sequins, whatever. But I keep it simple. Just uh, half a dozen six to ten beads now the hook is a size one small hook size one strong Aberdeen hook short shank and thread onto that I've got some frozen black lug if you've got fresh worm that would be even better but I've got frozen black lug which works fine just enough to cover the, cover the hook and just go over the shank of the hook so not too big and then tipped off I've got a small piece of launce fillet or large sandal fillet. Not very big, it's only about three inches long, so the whole bait is, is fairly small. Okay, so that's basically it. There's other rigs you can fish, of course. Spreader rigs people fish or wishbone rigs which work, but personally, personally I like to keep it, just keep it simple. Now, on the other rod, are exactly the same with the black lug covering the hook and over the shank, but I've got a different different bait to tip off, and that is mussel. I've got some small bits of mussel which I first bound with bait elastic to make it easier, easy to, to thread on the hook. So on the other rod, black lug and mussel. But that place, the first place, was caught on that. Black lug and a little, little strip of launce fillet. Okay, so... I'll, uh, I've drifted, drifted out, I'm drifting out at the moment, and what I do, I'll paddle back, back a bit closer to shore in uh, slightly shallower water. I've, I find, I've found with the place fishing, I never, I never really do any good when I drift out to deep water or deeper water, usually under 50 feet. Well, certainly under 60 feet, but usually under 50 feet, I find I get more success. So in other words, a bit closer to shore rather than being uh, way out in, in deep water. But that's, I don't know why. I'm sure you'll get them out in deeper water. The trawlers trawl them up, but um, when it comes to the run line fishing, um, I've always found usually under 50 feet, I get more, get more success. Okay, I've just, uh, I've just paddled back in closer to shore to set up another drift and letting the bait down. But it's hit the bottom now. I've mentioned this in previous videos, but what I do is, is I don't just engage the, the reel. Is I'm just going to pop it in the holder, but leave it in free spool to let some line out. So as we're, as we're drifting back, the line will go out and then, then engage the reel. And the idea is to, to get the baits well away from the kayak so they are dragging. So there's an angle, uh, an angle away, away from the kayak rather than it going vertical down there and just straight down to the bottom and bouncing up and down like that. You get more of an angle so it can drag nicely along the bottom. And the other reason for that is it frees up with the line going away here rather than down here. It frees up this space here, just in case I see a shoal of mackerel 
uh, I've got some speakers with me I can go down here or here uh, with plenty of room to maybe pick up some mackerel so the the line's just drifting out there and when I think I've got enough enough out and obviously the depth of the water the shallow you are the more the angle will be the deeper you are the the, uh, the steeper the angle will be all right that's it so just engage that now and get the other rod down there you go on that one the other rod it's the just tipped off with the with a bit of muscle but again the black and black and green beads well I'm feeling I'm feeling a bit better now I really was was feeling a bit queasy early on yeah it, it sort of happened within 15 minutes of getting out here this morning uh, there's a, say a bit of a roll out there early this morning and straight away I thought uh oh I've got problems today but uh, those pills there's a tip for you carry always carry in some sort of dry area dry bag dry box always have some seasickness tablets with you you just never know I don't, I don't care how many times you've been out to sea um, there's always that occasion where for some reason and it doesn't have to be rough you just got it if you just got a little bit of an up and down and for some reason you start feeling uh, it starts to get you and uh, there's, there's nothing worse in fact I remember years and years ago when I was out used to go out on charter boats fishing I think it was a I think it was an old Mevagissi skipper was saying to me even him and he's fished fished all his life he said there's the, there's the occasion when he just feels ill um, but yeah there's nothing there's nothing 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 worse when you start feeling seasick I mean that is it you're finished um, you know you've got these things as I'm sure many of you know try to keep focused focused on a fixed point the horizon or something um, because when you're on a boat and you start feeling if you start feeling seasick what happens at a boat of course you can stand up what happens if it get, get, gets to that point of course you go and sit you go and sit down like this as soon as you sit down it's worse um, than, than, than when you're standing up and trying to f focus on a fixed point but of course in a kayak you are sitting down close close to the to the water here and you you do feel it um, I've had it once once before where it, I've had to abandon the trip um, I just just got feeling so ill I just had just had to go in and that's hard enough when you feel like that and you've got three quarters of a mile or a mile to paddle in I can tell you it's no joke but what only once I've had to come in from feeling seasick and I think only about I think this is this is probably about the third maybe the fourth time when I've started to feel a bit squeezy um, but pop the pill pop the pill as soon as you start feeling it take take a couple of pills um, with a bit of luck with a bit, a bit of luck you'll be all right and it I think I'm still a little bit but I think it's getting better I think I'm going to be all right today hopefully I want to hopefully I want to catch some catch some more fish well I don't know what I've picked up here um, just started <laughs> I don't know whether I've picked up some rubbish off the bottom um, might have done some weed or something it doesn't feel like a fish but what is it ah, the spider crabs have arrived now can we get this oh, it's too small anyway hey, blonk
Oh, there we go. Drifting for spider crab. <laughs> Bit too small, otherwise I'd, I'd otherwise I'd have taken that one. Right, it looks like. I've, I've had a real, real, yep, definitely. I had, a, I had a real quiet spell where it had gone, it went completely flat calm and I was getting hardly any drift. And now fortunately, um, the breeze has picked up a little bit and uh, just baited up again and put it down and put the first rod down I was just putting that second rod down and um, the rod had only been down a short while and look at that a, a nice place and again this is on the oh yeah beauty this is on the black lug and the little strip of come on up you come little strip of lawns Fantastic. There you go, fantastic. Beautiful place. I shall look forward to eating this. Yeah, I just not long had that one down, rebaited and put that one down. And I was on I was on the process of, of lowering this one down. And uh off it went the other rod which is great but now it's good actually when when you uh, I find when you go drifting for place um, you, it's, you need a bit of move you need that movement so you need a bit of bit of a breeze um, but when it went completely flat I was uh, I was getting only getting about half a mile an hour half a mile an hour drift um, in other words drifting too slow and not covering much ground but yeah getting a bit of a bit of movement now well okay I've been monitoring the fish finder as I've been drifting along for the place just in case any mackerel uh, showed up and there's been absolutely nothing at all and um, then suddenly just saw a saw a shoal so I've gone down with the sabikis and we've got got a mackerel and also got a, a, um, a lance uh, which is going to be great because that lance will, I'll, will now I'll now use fillet it and get a bit, a bit of fresh fresh lance to tip tip off as a tip at tipping off the uh, the black lug uh, which is good well I'm gonna have to I will confess with this when I didn't I didn't notice this one was on um, I've been I was filleting some fresh uh, lance that I'd been that I'd caught filleting that and I thought oh I'm just about to set set up a new new drift and I'll get the get, get the rods in and rebait up and felt this one on. Um, when I was reeling in, so didn't even know I'd got that. I must have, uh, I must have not just not seen when I got the bite. But yeah, brilliant. That time on the the black lug and a little bit of muscle. For those of you interested, the size limit for place 
in Cornwall is, is 27 centimeters measured nose to tail and to give you a guide that one that one is 31 it measures 31 now to me 27 centimeter size limit is too small and they, to me they're just not worth taking unless they're at least 30 centimeters and as I say that one's that one's that one's 31 well I'm going to call it a day now and head on in I did intend to fish a little bit longer another hour or so down to low water but I'm going to call it a day now it's gone really dead anyway I haven't had a touch a bite for over an hour now since I caught the last one so I think I've probably seen the best of the day so I'm really pleased it's always great when you set out for a target species and I did think March I thought you know if I can get out on the kayak at some point in March I'm going to definitely go and do some drift fishing for place so when you do that it's always pleasing to at least catch one of your target species so I'm very very pleased that I caught I caught the three so I may if I can we'll see how it goes later on this spring come out again and do some drift fishing for place to see if I can catch some more but as I said we'll see so once again I hope you found that useful and many many thanks for watching <laughs>